inside it. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so we have a 50-year-old male, Mr. Dunn. He is a high-risk patient. His primary diagnosis is pneumonia and secondary diagnosis is asthma. You have patient orders. You're going to give O2 nasal cannula at 2 liters, IV D5W at 30 milliliters per hour. You're going to perform nasotracheal suction if the SpO2 is less than 92%. You're going to hand IV Levaquin, which is an antibiotic for his pneumonia. Um, it's going to be 250 milligrams and 50 milliliters of normal saline to run over 20 minutes. So, okay. so the first thing you're going to do, you're going to do your patient environmental and equipment assessment. So what is the first thing you're going to do Okay. when you walk in the room? Start from the very beginning. Um, so I wash my hands, I introduce myself to the patient, mm -hmm. tell them what I'm going to do, and then I'm going to, while I do that, I'll wait and identify the patient, like make first, last name, date of birth, and the mm -hmm. ID band, mm -hmm. and um, 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 uh, check their brief, uh, see when they're talking, see if they sound weird, uh, Check their color of the face to mm -hmm. see if they're kind of like bluish, pale, mm -hmm. and that would be a sign of not enough oxygen. And that's patient. That's patient. What about equipment? Equipment. Then we would check the equipment. So we see that the D5W is running at a higher rate than usual, so we lower yes. that down to 30. Yep. So we have, you have to change the rate from 40 to 30 milliliters per hour. And then we would check the nasal cannula, make sure it's at two liters. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it is. Hopefully it is. Yeah, hopefully it is. <laughs> it is at two liters. Okay, and then we check the urine. It's only, is that 10? Mm -hmm. 10 milliliters. Um, I think that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> what about the IV site? IV it, site. Um, the orders say that um, the IV is going to be the right ventral cephalic. Right ventral. Which is the forearm. Forearm. So check the site of the IV. Okay, so you make. Where is the IV? Is it in the forearm? Is it in their hand? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's not good because we do it. <laughs> yep. Okay. So these. Okay. What about the environment? Okay, what do you see wrong? There's a bunch of junk on the floor. Yep. Let's see. Oh, check. And we make sure the bed's okay. Yeah. The, make sure it's not. The, the, what about what's wrong with this? I, I don't know what that is. The sheets are everywhere. Oh, the sheets. I guess make help make the bed. <laughs> just toss them over everywhere. Um. Make sure there's no water too. So, what if? Um, okay. Bed not. Um, the bed is not locked. Oh, okay, yeah, we would have to definitely lock the beds because we can hurt ourselves or they just hurt themselves too. Yep. So we lean on the bed. Okay, um. Alright, so we did our PE assessment. Now we're going to move on to the vitals. Okay, so, um, blood pressure, respirations. Um, would the heart rate would be like on the the things that we would like? The pulse. The pulse, okay. The pulse. And then we would ask for the uh, oxygen and saturation. The saturation is 89%. Okay. So it would have to be the um, nasal tracheal suction, right? Mm -hmm. So if the SpO2 is 89%, um, just give me like a random number of what you think the blood pressure would be. Higher than normal. Mm -hmm. What about the pulse? Um, higher than normal. Yep. So and restorations? Hmm. I guess higher. So they like, try to get in as much air as they can. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I forgot yeah. what they would sound like, though. Like, is it? Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. And what else should, should you assess for? Pain and... The fifth bottle, sorry. Yep. Okay. Um, 
Let's see. Then, move your vitals and you ask for the temperature of SpO2 and pain level. Then you would do a pulmonary assessment. What is included in that? Okay, so lungs, lung sound. What kind of lung sounds will you hear? Probably crackle. Mm -hmm. What does that indi indicative of? Fluid. Uh, yeah, you're right. Fluid. Yeah. And then uh, my mom, rhythm, mm -hmm. death. So what would the rhythm be? Um, in the patient who has trouble breathing. I don't know. <laughs> um, normal or abnormal? I guess abnormal. Mm -hmm. In the death? I guess very deep. Yeah, it could be deep. It could be... I guess it just depends on the patient. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and... Um, death. Okay, I don't know. I'm look. <laughs> death. Okay, then cap we fell. So we can mm -hmm. squeeze your fingers. Then skin color. It would probably be like a little pale or maybe a little bit bluish. And then we'll check if they're alert and oriented. So we ask who they are, where they are, and what time it is. Well, by the time they get blue, you better do some something about it. <laughs> oh, yeah, true. <laughs> if they're blue, we'll, we'll, we'll bump up the That's air. That's a late sign. Oh, really? Oh, gosh, mm -hmm. okay. An uh, early sign is restlessness. Mm -hmm. And then there's confusion, too, but that would, that's probably a late yeah. sign, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. 89%. If it drops below that, then there's some issues. <laughs> yeah. Um, you got pulmonary assessment, so you know that your sound will crackle you. And that's because they have pneumonia. Um, what about energy assessment? Okay, so we'd ask them if they cough a lot and what they're if it's productive or not productive. Mm -hmm. And then if it's productive, we would ask about what color and consistency their mm -hmm. sputum is and how if much. If they have pneumonia, what kind of color would it be? Pink? Green? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because of infection, which is why you're going to administer the Leviquin. Okay, sure, sure. And what about their breathing? <laughs> we'd ask if they have shortness of breath. And then we'd ask what makes it better or worse. Yeah, and then... We would go on to the intervention. So if they have shortness of breath, um, if they cough, you can ask, is it, are you able to get it up? Mm -hmm. If so, what color it is, and if they're not able to get it up, then you perform the nasal tracheal sectioning. <laughs> okay, let's see. I think I can picture this. Okay, and um, so then the nasal tracheal sectioning. We would, uh, I guess, wash our hands, mm -hmm. um, make sure that the little package is sterile, and everything's in a hole. How would you prep the patient? What would you tell them? Oh, um, um, we would, I guess, educate. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, we did. We would educate the patient. Mm -hmm. So we're doing nasal tracheal because you're, because um, you have some fluid in your. And to help you breathe in. To yeah. help you breathe in. Yeah. And then we would position them and have them like sing uh, a little bit higher, um, mm -hmm. high power. Is it high power? I don't no. know. They okay. would sing up a little bit. They don't have to be sing straight up, but like a little angle. Mm -hmm. And then we hyper oxygenate them. So, so how many liters? Uh, well, my teacher said two, but then your teacher said one. So I guess like bump it up to whatever your teacher Three. said. Yeah. Three or four? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Three or four, yeah. And then we would turn on suction setting. So um, I think that would be uh, 100 to 120, right? 100 to 150. 100 to yeah. 150. And then... Um, and then you are ready to open the setting. So... Yeah. Open it. All right, when you open it, what is the first thing you take out? Um, well, you lay it side to side for you, and then you take out the um, the glove. Wait, you take out the water. I think, and then pour. You it. have the saline, and then you have the little box. Yeah, you open and, out the box, mm -hmm. then pour it in. Yeah, make sure not to touch it inside the 
It's pop up box, turn it in, then what do you do? And then um, you put on the gloves, right? Yeah. And a lot of people forget to to do the box to right? do the box before putting on their gloves. Because <laughs> when you put on your gloves and you touch the saline, That's it's terrible. contaminated. And then you would, um, I guess, you have your gloves on. And what is was that the tubing? I guess I connect the tubing to the little suction thing. Mm -hmm. So you grab the suction at the um, suction with your left with hand. Your hand, yeah. And then you connect it, and then by doing it, I guess. All right. Yeah. And then you do it for like five, fifteen. Take that off the beam and you do it for fifteen seconds. I think. Um, how many centimeters? Remember? Is it six or is it twenty? I get get them mixed up. Um, she just said um, go around and then if you pull the beam, yeah, pull back. Okay. And as you pull back, you suction. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. You want to test it before you actually suction too. Oh yeah, it's testing the water. And is your left hand clean or sterile? It's clean. Yep. And then um, um, you after you do it for fifteen seconds, you take it out, you put the nasal cannula back in mm -hmm. for a minute, and then you clean it. Mm -hmm. And then after a minute or so, you put it back in for another fifteen mm -hmm. seconds. Like suction it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then. Yeah, keep doing that until it's clear, I guess. Alright, and after you suction, what do you need to do? Uh, put the nasal cannula back, then uh, turn it down. Oh, yeah, and then um, throw away the stuff, do the assessment. Yeah, we assess for the long sounds. So check the long sound. Alright, so you've done the suctioning. And check that if they're oxygen. And now... 93? <laughs> 90. Oh, 90. Beautiful. <laughs> Actually, you know, let's do 95. Okay. Um, yeah. So, we did check that area. So, check the lung sounds and the rate, I mean the rhythm and depth, cap refill, mm -hmm. skin color, and check if they're alert and oriented. And then, wait, where we check the vital signs too? Well, the main thing is the SpO2. Okay, SpO2. Because if you have a normal SpO2, um, you're more likely to have normal vitamins okay. elsewhere. And then, and then, um, you need to go ahead and educate the patient about the levoquin. Yes. So you now got your levoquin, mm -hmm. and okay, this is to help kill the bacteria. In your lungs that's causing the pneumonia. pneumonia. <laughs> yep. And um, yeah. So then we would uh, put the saline. Wait. So we would prime the bag. Right. So you have your bag. Mm -hmm. And what kind of tube do you need? You got primary or secondary? Primary for the normal saline. Wait. What we need. Yeah, yeah, you have the pri the primary for normal saline, so you need the secondary for the piggyback. Mm -hmm. And should normal saline be, I mean, should the piggyback be higher, the same? Um, it should be high. Yeah. So you have your Levaquin right here. And the normal saline. And then your secondary it. pouch, yeah. So you're going to take the secondary treatment out, and then what are you going to do next? A package. Package. Um... So you uh um <laughs> you would prime it so you would run the air through the tubing and then you would um um, um tubing then you would I guess clean the ports then connect then do the rate right mm -hmm. and then oh I guess it teach I I well I would teach before that mm -hmm. and then. Do the rate too if I didn't say that already. Yeah, so you're gonna take it, you're gonna spike it, make sure all the claims are closed, you're gonna spike it and then hang it. And then the Y port that is closer to the pump, you're gonna <laughs> No, you're gonna um, rub it for like 30 seconds and mm -hmm. then 
connect it. Oh, 30 seconds? Yeah, that's what um, Miss Gilbert said. Gosh! And then you connect it to the live bird. And then you use the right. Yep. And then you're going to plug in the right in the IV pump. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to set the IV site. I guess that's it, right? Oh, and then we would identify the patient too. And how long should an IV bag be? Mm -hmm. Oh, um, well, the normal IV bag should be like 36 inches above the patient. And should be kept 24 hours, at least 24 hours. And the tube in is, I think, 96 hours. Oh, and then changed. Yeah, yeah. The change. Sorry. Yeah. Now that you did all that, you're going to document. Um, and you're done. Your assessment, your interview, um, any interventions, which is the nasal echo mm -hmm. suction in, and the outcome. The patient should be breathing a lot better. And once he gets the medication, the IV, the antibiotic should start to work. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so yay, we're done.